Hi everyone, I hope you are doing well. So today we are going to see how to easily create spline and create physical collision between them. I'm going to concentrate on the title setup, but you can find the full textual file on Patreon as well as a lot of cool projects like the creation of Azure Dome and Studio Render as well as a lot of projects and source files. Okay, enough talking. Let's start now. Okay, so now we are in 3ds Max and the first thing I'm going to do is to create a plane for the position of the particle, so aeroplane 50 by 50 and I will now rotate this plane 90 degrees ok, like this, perfect I will now duplicate this plane I cannot create a type flow setup open editor I will now add a burst 0, 0 and 40 particles I can now add position object, pick my plane one. You can see here in yellow the particles. I will now duplicate this event, copy, past here, delete this plane, and pick the other plane. Okay, now we can see the particle with the same position on the plane. You can see here, same position. I will now add a set target. From neighbors, I will set a name for the channel, target1. I can now go in target filters and exclude this event because we want that the particle only find the neighbors on the other plane. I can now go down in the menu and up a bit the radius, like this. Okay, I can now add a fine target. Control by time in maybe 20 frame. I will now go here in target location, point and select particle target. I can now select my channel, target one. And you can see here that the particle here go find the other plane, the neighbors in 20 frame. 20 frame, perfect. Now what I want to do is to create more particles, so I will add spawn. Select by travel distance. I will now duplicate the display. Change the color, maybe to a green, like this. So I can now link the spawn to the event tree. And go further in the animation. And we can see here in green the creation of the particle. It's perfect like this. You can of course go back to spawn and here in the step size, up or decrease the amount of particle to less particle. I think a value of 0.5 will be very good. Okay, it's perfect. Now what I want to do is to create bind between particles, so I will add the particle bind. I can also add a slow. With a value of 10, maybe. Okay. For the particle bind, I will first decrease the bias 0.3. I deactivate enable proximity bind. And I will only activate bind to sibling. Okay. Perfect. So it's great, but we can see that the particles are not bind to the plane. So I will add a surface test. Pick my plane 1 and plane 2. I can now add an object bind. Do the same. Plane 1, plane 2. Bring the surface test to the object bind. And you can see here in the other color that the particles are not bind to the plane. It's good. I can maybe decrease the distance here in the distance test. A value of 1 will be perfect, I think. Okay, it's great. If you want, you can add a force to add a gravity. I can maybe decrease the value to a low value, like 0 0.02. And you can see here a little gravity, and we can see that the binds are actually really good. I can go here in Particle Bind Solver and up the Particle Bind, the step, to have better bind. 
Yeah, it's really good like this. Perfect. Now what I want to do is to create spline, so I will add a spline pass. Create new. And I will not set trajectories, but particle binding. I can deactivate all the display. Go to type spline, weld binding, and well not. Okay, really cool like this. I can also go here in type spline measure, go down in the menu, and up a bit the resolution of my spline. If I go to clay mode to see it better, I can see here the resolution, the subdivision of the spline, and I will have the value to maybe a value of 16. Perfect. Okay, so now as you can see, I have the creation of the spline with particle bar. All is perfect. Now what I want to do is to create the rotation. So I will deactivate my type flow and my type plan. Go to frame zero. I will go here in helper and create a dummy. One dummy. I can now duplicate the dummy. Select the first one and align the first one to the plane one. Center, center, and do the same for the second. Select the dummy, align to this plane. Center, center, all the position. Okay, I can now select this plane and link this plane to the dummy. Like this. And do the same for this one. Like this. Maybe go to frame 25 because the creation of the spline will end to frame 20, so 25 will be good. I will now up the number of frames, 200. I cannot select the dummy 1 and the dummy 2. Activate the auto key, create a key here, and go maybe to frame 150 here, and I will rotate this dummy in this direction and the other dummy in the opposite direction. So, I select the dummy, rotate, with a value of maybe 250, and I will do the same here in the opposite direction. 250, like this. Perfect. So, we can see here that this plane is animated in this direction, and this one in the opposite direction. Okay, it's perfect like this. I cannot go back here to frame 0. Don't need to see the dummy and the plane. And I will activate the tie flow and the tie spline. In 20 frame, and after the frame 25, we can see here the rotation of the spline. It's cool, but we can see that we don't have collision here. It's not really good like this, so I will go back to type flow, open editor, and I will go here after the particle bind, I will create a particle physics. Particle physics here. We can see here some trouble, so we will fix that. I will go here to frame zero. Enable particle collision. For the radius, I will not change for the moment. I will just up the tolerance to 100 and the stiffness to 1. Go down and up the maximum neighbor to a really high value, maybe 500. So, the question of the spline and still have this issue. So, I will go here and activate ignore starting penetration. And now it's perfect. And you can see that it works. It's really cool. We have really cool binding and collision, but we can see that the space between its spline is maybe too high. So I will go back to my particle physics here, and I will decrease the radius to the same value than my type spline radius. The type spline radius is here to 0 0.5, I think. Yes, 0 0.5. So I will decrease the radius to 0 0.5.
and you can see that it's perfect like this. Really cool. What I love to do is to go back to this event one here. And if you want, you can up a bit the total of particle, maybe 100. Yeah, really cool result. I love the result here. To finish, if you want to create some different results, what you can do is to play with the modify binding operator. I can go here and add a modify bindings. So here in the operation, I will select multiply current. I can play if I want with a stretch. And if I decrease the stretch to a value of 0, 1, you can see that it creates very different results. It's up to you to play with this setting to create the look you want for your particle. Of course, don't forget if you want to up or decrease the size of your spline, you have to do the change in the particle physics here in the radius. So if I up my radius to a value of 0 0.8, I have to go here in my type spline, spline measure, and the radius here to 0 0.82. Yeah, it's really cool. Really beautiful result. Now, if you want to add material to the spline, what you can do is to go here in the type spline, add your materials, play here with the normalized UV and the UV coordinate in U and V. And you can to finish if you want add a material ID to apply different texture to your splines. Okay, guys, that's it for this tutorial. I hope you've learned a lot of things. Don't forget to thumb up and to subscribe if you like my work. You can find all the project and bonus tutorials on my Patreon. And of course, follow me on Instagram or Beyond if you want. See you soon for the next tutorial, guys. Bye.